I know you're going to be shouting for your team today. Come on now. Might even break your TV. I don't know. Hallelujah. But for the Lord, we got to shout louder. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn around, give, everybody, give somebody a smile. You can be seated this morning. Thank you, worship team. How many enjoy the worship? Amen. Worship is powerful. Praise God. It's good to be here this morning. November. Amen. Fall back already. We got an extra hour for some of us. Some of us probably slept, uh, stay up later, so it didn't make no difference. Hallelujah. But uh, so yesterday, so going, for me, it was long. I was like, man, it's taking forever to get to the sleeping time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then I looked and it repeated itself, the hour. Amen. But uh, it's good to be here this morning. Open your Bibles to the book of Matthew 25, and you can stand for the reading of the word. And then after church, we have some food available for fellowship and investment, amen, in the kingdom of God. So don't want to make sure don't rush, amen, stay around. It's not raining like yesterday. Praise the Lord. And then connect tomorrow with your life group, amen. It's important to connect, to stay connected to the vine. Matthew 25, verse 24 when you have it, say amen. amen. And if you're not, it's okay. I'll be up there somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible reads and it says, Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that he had a heart. He, he, I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not so and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Verse 25 says, so I was afraid. Come on, everybody say afraid. afraid. Everybody, afraid. Not just afraid. Him. afraid. And went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. In verse 26, it says, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I have harvest where I have not sowed and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put it in, put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I return, I will have received it back in, with interest. 20 years says, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Verse 29 it says, for whoever has will be, will be giving more. And they will have in abundance. And whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. Verse 30 is key. It says, and throw the worthless servant outside into darkness where there will be the whipping and gnashing of teeth. Say, ouch. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will remove me and let the Spirit of God flow through me this morning. Speak to me as you've spoken to me, to your people with clarity, understanding. Lord, I pray that we will leave here, Father God, challenged. Not discouraged, but challenged to change within our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen and amen. You can be seated this morning, amen. And the title of the theme, we've been talking about the talents, so the parable of the talents. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last week, if you have not, uh, were not here th last week, last Sunday, we began to speak about the parable of the talent. And you can watch it on Facebook Live or on YouTube. Amen. We have it recorded there. Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to go into the details of, of this uh, parable, but just a little bit knowing that God, this master, was able to entrust his wealth. Everybody say wealth. wealth. It says gold. Amen. A lot of people want to just uh, sugarcoat it, but it actually it's gold. Say gold. And for one, he gave five, and then two, and then one, and the five doubled it. Say double up. Double up. Come on, say double up. double up. He saw something, amen, and he was able to invest even greater, so therefore he was able to double up. 
We know that you wear this in the word double up, right? Oh, oh, am I in the wrong church? Right? We understand double up, right? So, therefore, two bags was given to some uh, another uh, servant. He was able to what? Double up. See, double up. double up. But then there was the one that he was entrusted with one, and he was thought he was smart enough by just hiding, right? Hiding what God gave him. And, and that's the... The, the verse that I want to just uh, uh, begin to speak to you about this morning. I want to begin to, I want to use this word, strapulate, which means to break it down. I want to strapulate this word here uh, this morning, right? And, and the one, why was it this man different from the other two, right? He was given one, and the other was two and five. And you begin, I begin to st- Think about why was it so different? What was the difference maker? Can I get an amen? Why was this individual, amen, took upon himself to hit the, the gift that God gave him to be secure? When he came back, he still had it, right? And I began to, begin to wonder why. Why was this young man was given so little but yet was not so responsible with what God gave him, right? So therefore, we see, amen, the key verse that I want to just begin to speak to you about is when he responded, he says, so I was afraid. God, his master blessed him with the bag of gold just like the other one, right? And then I began to think maybe he was hating that he only got one. Oh, he got quiet now, man, right? Why this guy got five and he got two and I got one, right? Because a lot of times we like to compare. Let's be honest, right? We, we want to compare. Maybe he, he began to speak within his mind that he must be the favorite because he got five. He must be the less, least favorite because he got two and I'm not the favorite one. Therefore, I got one. You start thinking, why? Why? I'm going to say, why? why? Why was this individual thinking that he was going to be smarter than the master? Right? And when you begin, I begin to read that the word that came out of, that came out of the scripture was, I was afraid. Right? Afraid, it's another word for unwilling. Another similar word to it is unwilling. Everybody say Unwilling. I'm willing to do what God called them to do, right? So therefore, when he begins to say, I was afraid, in other words, he was saying, I was unwilling. Come on, say unwilling. But the key word is afraid, fear. See, God regards fear of man as a manifestation of pride. Ooh, come on. How many of us are afraid of people? A lot of us, we say we are antisocial when we come and become Christian. Right? That's what I hear in Victory Aries. I'm antisocial. I don't like people. But you're at the party. You don't like people? No, I had, I had a little juice. Yeah, but you're here you got the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen? Over there, you got Jack Daniel. If don't look at me like you don't know who that is. I'm trying to follow up on Jack Daniel. No. Hello? Right? I had a little help. That's why I was able to mobilize myself. But here, amen, we got what we call the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, That comes within your life. Hallelujah. There's no high like the most high. We have that saying. Can't nobody do you like Jesus can? Can Are you with me this morning? So we cannot say, amen, it's because of this or that. Because we have the goods. But it's actually an evidence Fear of man is evident or a manifestation of what we call pride. Fear of man really is a mask of pridefulness. I deal with a lot of people that say that I'm afraid. Hello? I'm afraid to connect. I'm afraid to go to the life group. I'm afraid to step out in faith. I'm afraid. Can I get any man? But I want to let you know or remind you this morning that God has not given us a spirit of fear. 
In the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But of what? Of power. Everybody likes power. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> not only the power, but of love and self-control. 2 Timothy 1, 7. That's what God gives us, not a spirit of fear. So therefore, we should not be afraid of stepping out when God wants us to step out. And if you're afraid of stepping out, then it's a manifestation of what we call pride. And if you don't know this, one of the most, I want to say, hated sins, if there's any, which the Bible describes them there, and I'll tell you where in a minute, it's pride. God despise a prideful individual. Hello? Because a person that is prideful is a person that doesn't need nobody. Even a person that is homeless, you want to tell them, hey, we got a recovery home. I'm good. I'm good. You're freezing to death. I'm good. No, that's pride. Can I get an amen? You don't want to walk in and change your life. It's pridefulness, even to the less of the less. You don't have to be high and mighty, can I get in it, man? But even the less of the less still carry what we call the word pride. Afraid to change. Afraid to step out on something, a journey of faith, or even something new within your life, can I get in it, man? We like to be in the norm, whatever normal is. I don't know what normal is to this day, right? Comfort may be normal, I don't know. But the title of the message this morning, as we go into this theme, is, I want to call it Purging Pride. Purging Pride. Ever seen that movie, Purge? Never? We like crazy movies, all right? So don't judge me. You should be watching Jesus movies. You know, there's only a couple of those, amen? Right? You should be watching, you know, en encouraging movies, Pastor. Sorry, I like watching Saw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I like to watch John Wick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry. Amen. But I want to call it purging. Purging, it's a violent removal of a group of people from their place. So we want to make sure that we talk about this pride to be removed within the group, right? That's what the Bible says in 1 Peter. I don't, I don't know if they have it up there. 1 Peter chapter 5. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The Bible reads and it says, The elders, to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering who has who always will share in the glory to be revealed, right? And we'll jump to verse 5. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to, the, to your elders. All of you, clothe, in, clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposed the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself, in verse 6. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Right? The Bible says that in 1 Peter chapter 5 that we must what? Humble ourselves. That God opposed the proud. Hello? God opposed those that are prideful. But he gives favor to those that are humble. Are you with me? Now, I'm talking about being humble, not stepped on. Oh, you got quiet now, right? Because it's a different from being stepped on and being humble. Can I get an amen? Right? There's some people like to step on you all the time. But eventually, amen, you got to say something. Can I get an amen? Right? So this morning, I want to just talk a little bit about pride. Is that all right with you this morning? Right? Pride is, is probably one of the worst or the most prevalent of the seven deadly sins in the Bible. 
And many Christians carry it today. Nobody, I didn't get no amen on that one. I don't have it. There it is there. There it is there. I don't have that. True. What's he talking about? There it is. Proves my point. There's a lot of us that carry that in, within our lives, and we actually partner with that because we call it fear instead of faith. Right? See, pride convinces laziness that someone else should be doing it for me. They put that up there? Oh, no. That's all right. Pride convinced lust that they may did that that did who? Pride convinced lust that my pleasure comes before God's priority. Pride convinces anger that if I don't get my way, someone will have to pay. You know people like that? Oh, they're gonna have to pay. For that, even Christians today, nobody going to do me like that, shoot. I thought you were supposed to be humble. Not today. Right. Pastor said not to be stepped on. <laughs> Speak out. Hello, somebody. Right? But you understand what I'm talking about being stepped on. Right? Are you with me with that? <laughs> See, sometimes, you know, pride also convinced gluttony. You know what gluttony is? Right? You know this? We just want to feed ourselves. <laughs> Don't judge me. Matter of fact, I'm losing weight. Gluttony is when you're full and you want more. Until you get sick more. I'm sick. Oh, I'm not good. My food is good. But I'm sick. Oh, about to blow up. Don't touch me. Boom. Hello. Pride convinces gluttony that I better get my eating on. Because tomorrow not, it's not promised. Pride convinces greed. That the more I have, the more I will be satisfied. That's why a lot of people find three, four jobs. And you're still broke. Hello, if I could give me two jobs, mm, equals 18 times 18, that's 36. I'm making 36 bucks an hour. Woo! But you're working 15, 18 hours a day. Woo! I never see you. All your wife sees you. All your children sees you. But surely you're making 36. Hello. Broke, tired, depressed, oppressed. But pride will keep you having more. Hello. Pride convinced envy that I deserve better than you. Oh, come on now. Are you with me? The dictionary defines pride as a high or an ordinary opinion of one's own counsel. In other words, the prideful individual always have an opinion. Are you with me? Not a suggestion, not an idea. Hello, somebody, right? But an opinion of what, how, and sh how should we worship God, and how should we give to God, and how we got to do this for God, instead of having an attitude of humbleness and humility unto the Lord. Can I get an amen? Have you met people like that? Somebody that always has an opinion when it comes to the things of God. You don't need to come to church on a Wednesday or on a Friday or on a Sunday. That's too much church, my friend. Just come on a Sunday. You should be okay. Right? And there comes pride giving an opinion. Hello. Jesus is everywhere. I can take him anywhere with me. I can serve him anywhere. I can have church at the parking lot. Yeah. I can have church in my room. I don't need to come. As a matter of fact, I am the church. I'm already in church. Hello, somebody. So therefore, I take the church where I go. Look at that. It flows. It mobilizes. 
But the reality is, how many of us think about God every day? How many of us take time, amen, to separate and open our word and spend some quality? I'm talking about a quality time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? An individual that doesn't want to come to church is a person that wants to be on his own. Disconnected. The Bible said that you must remain in the vine. The Bible talks about also to do not stop coming from the assembly of God. Gathering together. Because as it wanted, when there's one or two, two or three gather, then the Lord is in the mix. In other words, when we're all together in one accord, amen, the presence of God must be in the house. Can I get an amen? When we're in tune, amen, the presence of God should be in the house. Every demon shall bow. Every depression shall bow. Are you with me? Right? Every loneliness shall bow to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It must flee from your life. Right? Pride is a dangerous spirit that hangs around people's life. In the Bible, there's many examples of people that are prideful individual. And then at one time, they had an encounter with God in the book of Acts. It talks about Saul. They became what? Paul. When he was in the road of Damascus, right, the road of Damascus, he was going to that road, amen, and eventually what happened? He was going to persecute the believers. He was getting permission so he won't get in trouble. Can I get permission? He said, I'll go kill me some Christians. That was his goal. Hello? Because he was self-righteous. He was prideful man. Are you with me? So righteous man, he knew the word of God. He knew he, he was a scribe of scribe, a Pharisee of Pharisees, right? We have those individuals that come into our churches sometimes. You can see them walking in. And they sit there with the little, taking notes of the stuff that everything was wrong. Right? They shouldn't pick up ties outside of God. That's old Testament stuff. Right? You shouldn't do, you shouldn't even say smoking stuff. Because it triggers people mentality. Wrong. False teaching. False church. And they walk around smiling at everybody. God bless you, brother. Right? Self-righteous. I'm so grateful for our ministry. Not because I'm a pastor of it. Because I wasn't a pastor when I walked in. I'm grateful this, that I can walk into a church not being judged mental. Can I get an amen? Because the way I walked into church, I didn't look like this when I walked into church. Can I get an amen? When I walked into church, I looked tore up from the floor up. Can I get an amen? I was busted and disgusted. It couldn't be trusted. Oh, you don't get me. Can I get an amen? I was a low life with the low lives. I was messed up on meth. And the way they looked at me was with love and kindness. I took it offensively because I was tweaking. What are they looking at? Phew. What's that? What's the deal with that? What's up with that hug? They picked on me. There's a lot of hugs in this place. Hallelujah. Are you with me? But thank God that it wasn't. A judgmental kind of church. Can I get, we know those churches. We've been to those churches. I used to go to those churches all the time. Look at that hoodlum. I was a hoodlum. That's why I dress like this. Because I'm a thug. How a thug looks. Not like all dressed up. Hey, what's up, buddy? Right? I have my 44s. Creased up. White t-shirts, creased up, three in the back, one in front. Oh, you don't know about that, huh? <laughs> Boxers creased. Oh, you don't know about that either, hallelujah. You're like, right, yeah, creased, amen, right? Socks creased. Oh, you don't get that one, hallelujah. That was just for Friday. 501s, different colors. Brand new tennis shoes, white. Don't step on me, hallelujah, because you're going to be on and popping. Right? Came in like that, like just a regular thug. 
Other churches will judge me. Look and watch them. They didn't even sit next to me because I was a pastor's kid. I shouldn't be like that. I should be walking on water. Well, it's raining outside. Surely I am walking on water. <laughs> I can use that my walking on water. Look, I'm walking. It's raining <laughs> all day long. But I walked into Victory Outreach in 94. And I walked into a place that it was different. Because I've been to Victory Outreach before. But not with the mentality of change. I went to Victory Outreach before with the mentality to check things out. Who was there? Right? People come from different motives. When I went to California, I went for the wrong motives. I thought I had to go back to my trunk and get my stuff because I thought I was going to get jumped at Victory Outreach. I went to Victory Outreach San Bernardino, and I walked in. All the sinners row was about five rows. <laughs> Not one row, but five rows. I walked in. Everybody turned around looked at me like, what's up with this guy? <laughs> Should I go back to my car and come back for protection? Hello. You know what I'm talking about. We looked around and turned around. And they, they still love me. Are you with me? I had to break that pride. Thank God for a church like ours. We shouldn't be judging people by the way they look. We shouldn't. Because some people do. Don't We shouldn't. Because we were that individual one time. Right? God was working in the inside. And eventually he'll come in the outside. That's my saying when I was telling my dad. My dad was like, why are you still wearing shorts and chocolate? Well, it's hot outside, first of all. <laughs> and God is working on the inside. Well, you're a pastor. You're still working on the inside for the outside. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> right? See, pride thinks it's all about me. Pride is, is the worship of me, myself and I. They always think about themselves, right? Have you met people like that before? What am I getting out of this situation? When it's supposed to be an overall situation. Not what I get, right? Pride craves admiration or adoration. In other words, He's not shy of the life life. He's looking for people to pat them in the back. He's looking for people to exalt them. Are you with me? For the things they have done. When God is the one that is going to exalt us. God is the one that's going to uplift you. God is the one that is going to bless you and reward you for the good deeds that you have done. Can I get an amen? So when I begin to look at that, that individual's life with that one talent, I begin to think what was the root of the, of the issue. And the root of the problem was called pride. A self-righteous attitude. That's my opinion. That's my thoughts. A self right What would it cause an individual to hide his talent? It must be a spirit of pride within his life. Can I get an amen? That said, I'm not going to do what they asked me to do. But instead, I'm going to hide it. And I'll deal with the consequences later. Hello? How many of us done that before? How many of us, God has blessed you with some talent and abilities, and we hide them, and we say without saying it, some way, somehow we'll say, oh, I'll deal with the consequences later. But we know the consequences of later. Because it was here in the scripture in Matthew 25 when he says, you lazy, wicked servant. That is the consequences of later. When God begins to hold us accountable for what he's given us. God is going to hold us accountable for the life he gave you. God is going to hold you accountable for the money that he blessed you with. God is going to hold you accountable for the disciple that God gave you. Can I get an amen? God is going to hold you accountable for your wife and your children or your husband and your children. God is going to hold us accountable. Accountability is when God will take count 
or what have you have done with the gift that, that God has given us. I was telling the guys this morning, he said, I will hate to be the third servant because it can happen to me too. Although I got plenty of fruits or plenty of, I multiply for my family to this. Because at the beginning, I started with just me and my family. Yeah. Right? God is blessed with me and my family. When I pioneered this church, it was just me and my family, my kids. Hello? And they were not older. They were just little, little kids. So I used that, amen, to preach and evangelize even to my own children. And God entrusted me with some guys and some ladies. And eventually it began to what, develop and grow to what we are today. Right? So what I'm saying is, what are we doing with what God has given us? Because what God has given you is better than gold. Hello, what you have in your hands is better than gold. We're not talking about buku money, but what God gave you is better than what the devil gives you. Amen. Matter of fact, the devil is an individual that gives you and takes it from you. Can I get an amen? Right? Takes it from your life, despise, takes care, or deceives individuals' life by thinking that they're going to be okay out there in the world. Egypt was better. Are you with me? See, the root of the, of the problem on this individual's life, which is my thinking, is pride. If you look at the Pharisees in the Bible and their attitudes, they will walk into a place and will say, oh, this sinner is greater than that sinner. In other words, his sin is greater than this one. So all those, they, got, they had levels of sinners. Instead of thinking about a future, I can, that individual can be used for greater things, or that individual can be used. No, they were just matching sin. And sound like, don't, doesn't it sound like religious people? Religious people are always matching sin. You're tripping about this person gossip, but she's over there in adultery. Sounds like gossip right there, huh? I did that real good. Uh, you're tripping about this. You're like, oh, what? Who's in adultery? Everybody's looking around right now like, who is it? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Expose it, Pastor. Expose it. I need to know. I felt it. I felt it, and you just confirmation. I'm just saying it, amen. I just threw it out there, amen. Everybody just got all shaking when I said that. Relájate. Hello. I was going to say something, but anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Caught me right here. That's not of God. No. <laughs> right? Proverbs 6, 16, verse 18, it says, there are six things that the Lord hates. I thought he hates everything that is not of him, but there's seven that are actually uh, detestable to him. A hasty eye. Anybody knows what a hasty eye is? Come on, everybody look. We got the eyes, but we look hasty eye. Hello, come on. A lying tongue. You do that every day almost. Tell them I'm not here. But you're here. Tell them I'm not here. Don't worry about it. Tell them. Ignore it. Hands that shed innocent blood. We deal with that all throughout the world. Right? Abortion. Oh, you didn't see that one either. Huh? You're like, Whoa, open your eyes up there. Right? Are you pro-life pro or against life, right? God don't like people that shed innocent blood. A heart that has devised wicked scheme. A person is always plotting. How, how can I get away with this one? You know, people like that, like always plotting. Like, Man, you were just plotting all this stuff to be perfectly, you could get away with it. Right? When people are cheating, oh, I'm gonna, you want me to give you some nuggets on that? Right? They want to go somewhere, so they do is they create a fight. You know, the guys are laughing over here because you know this. Like, ah, that was me. 
You create a fight with your wife, that way you're like, I'm out of here. I ain't talking to you no more. I'm out of here. And then go out for two or three days. Where are you going? Where are you at? I'm over here. Yeah, right. I'm serving the Lord. Anyway, I'll just give me that one. Hallelujah. For free. That's for free one right there. Amen. That's a hard is what? Devise wicked schemes. Always trying to come up to do the wicked and get not in trouble. Fee that I quickly rushed into evil. In other words, you get offended and you quickly want to bounce. I'm out of here. That's what it talks about. This is the things that God hates the most. So with this servant here, refuse basically to invest out of fear, out of pride. That's one of the things that he hates the most. So therefore, I understand why he spoke like them, him, the way he spoke to him. You lazy, wicked servant. In the harsh, anybody gets upset if I say something bad. But the Bible even says it even harsher. Can I get an amen? Right? I had it. I still had it. I didn't lose it. I put it under the ground. I saved it because I know who you were. That's the key. You're always thinking about the person, who he is, not thinking of what God has given you. Right? And if you're that individual and know who God is, like he says, I know who you are. And if you're that individual, I know who God is, then you should be what? Reverence. Because we know the outcome. Because we know who he is. And because we know who he is, we shouldn't have fear. We should have reverence to the word of God when he tells us, go eat and make disciples to the nation by what? Being a witness of his power in your life. I'm paraphrasing the scripture. Can I get any man? To be a witness of what God has done in your life. And then what we do? We go home and watch Netflix. And we expect ref we, we expect results. Can I get any man? Right? When I meet with the guys on a Sunday morning, I throw, I throw questions. What did you get this week out of all the messages? Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Without looking at your notes. Because if you look at your notes, that means that it's not in your heart. Hello. Right? And they, got to, they start telling me, like, well, we didn't say that. That sounded good. Jesus is always in the picture. You said about Jesus, nah. No, nobody said that. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Because when you go home, what did you do when you go home? What's your plan? Well, I got to go to a birthday party. I got to watch the game. I got to DVR my game and watch it. That's what I do. I'll be honest. But after that, later on the night, either I watch a show and either I, my wife goes to sleep and I open my Bible or my Bible or my books so or I read them and go through the notes that I spoke about today. And I'll be like, man, I should have said that. I missed that one right there. That would have been an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. That would have been an hour, an hour and 45 minutes. No. <laughs> Man, I missed some good ones. And then I put them on devotions. And I'll send them out to some of the teams and stuff. Some of you guys get my devotions. So that way, either you ignore it because you got it, or you receive it and say, Man, I needed to hear that. Thank you. Right? Either or. But I'll send it because it's important to understand that it's not, amen, that you are afraid because God has not given you a spirit of fear. It's because some of us, we don't want to leave what we call comfort zone. I'm comfort. I'm okay where I'm at. And God wants you to step out. We spoke about daring faith. We talked about crazy faith. We even dare you to step out. Remember that message? I dare you to have faith. I dare you to. Those individuals that, that are wealthy today throughout the world, they are risk takers. And God requires for us to be what? Risk takers. But those that are rich today, those that are wealthy today, is because one day they were risk takers. 
They took a risk on a product. They went in front of Shark Tank. They made them look like fools there or whatever it was. But they were taking risk because they, were, they, they believed in a product. They believed in a product that could benefit what the community. God is giving you a product. Oh, you don't get that. He's giving you a gift of salvation. It's, not a, it's something that is free, but it's for the whole world for you to share the good news of God in your life. Can I gain it, man? God is giving you a sane mind, not an insane, but a sane mind. Can I gain it, man? At one time, you were insane in the midbrain. Oh, you know that song. Right? We, you, we, we were not afraid of the world, so you said. I don't know. I've never been in your shoes. So I don't know if you were or not. But I received whatever you told me. I never was afraid of nothing. And then I take it to the street. Well, I don't know if I should go in there. Like, it's dangerous in there. Like, I thought you didn't want to scare nobody. What happened? Right? I took out 10 dudes in one shot. Pop, 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 pop. Let's go over here. No, it's dangerous. I, you know, I'm trying to be, I got a family now. Hello, you should take a bullet for the world. Why not Jesus? You should die for a neighborhood that is not even there. It's, you're tagging on your I got a tag on my hand. I was like, like, what is that? Yeah, there's nothing there now. I'm sure we're kicking it there for a long time. We're like holding the floor and nobody pay rent for us. Hallelujah. It's gone. It was tagged. And I was willing to take a bullet for that. That's, a, that's how good the devil is. To deceive us. To fight for, some, for something that's called nothing. You're fighting for nothing. And you're down for it. How about fighting for something that actually value? What about fighting for something that actually counts? Can I get an amen? Right? If I, took a, if I was willing to take a bullet in the world, I'm willing to take a bullet not for the Lord Jesus. I know where I'm going. Can I gain him, man? As a matter of fact, I'll give him a high five. Thank you, but I'm going to heaven right now. Hallelujah. And I'm going to surely hear those words, good and faithful servant, come on in and enjoy the happiness of your master. I can say that with confidence. How about you this morning? We're trying to get rid of some pride. See, a lot of people would think that they don't have pride, and those are the individuals that you got to work on. I don't have that. Right? We'll put you in the test to find out. Hello, test. Yeah. See if you're prideful or not. Right? In the home, they, we, we used to have in the home, we used to do car wash and just having the guys on the side, that was a humble pie. We call it humble pie because nobody wants to hold a sign and your homies driving by. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I haven't seen you for a while. I'm doing a call. Where you at? I'm at this, uh, I'm raising money for a funeral. <laughs> you want to tell them the truth? I'm here with the rehab home. I need to change my life. You know, that's why I'm here. No, it's humble, humbling just to go out there. But you used to put a sign in the street corner and pick up money that you didn't use for but you use it for something else. I'm very hungry and cold. Please give me something that is going to warm me up. You get that one tomorrow. I'll let you too. Come on now. I need some Jack Daniel to warm me up. It's him and Jack Daniel. I even never touched that before. But for whatever reason, somebody here does. Not just kidding. He's talking to me. See, you told him, babe. No. So we see here that two of them, as I get the worship team, two of them knew what to do with it. Well, three of them knew what to do then. Two decided to do it and one decided not to. Right? That's when you begin to see the change in people's life. When you learn to what? To purge that pride within your life. To remove that pride within your life. We come from the streets, we come from the world, and we live in the streets and we come from the world, we are actually people that are very prideful. What? 
But you don't hear that in the street. You don't hear your homie calling you prideful. Bro, you're so prideful. Maybe arrogant. But not prideful. Maybe stupid. You're so stupid, bro. But not prideful. You don't hear that with your homies like, hey, you're so prideful, bro. You're like, oh, you're a backslider, huh? Because only Christians talk about pridefulness and pride. Right? What I'm saying with that is that we don't know those terms until we come here and God begins to reveal those things within our lives that needs to be purged within our lives. To live a humble life. You know what's humbling? That you come to church and, and you see your worst enemy in the same seat. same vicinity and you have to humble yourself and shake his hand without no bitterness show him love that's humbling instead of being spiteful hatred oh I hate that guy that's a test of what God has you in your life so it's a good thing not a bad thing that your worst enemy won't show up, won't show up to church. It's a good thing. Not about, oh, man, I'm going to have to change church now. This stinking person came right now. Mess up my whole life. What an opportunity to let them know that, hey, God changed my life. You don't have to trip about me. Surely I'm not tripping about you because God changed me. Right? That's humbling. Being able to do that. I, I got blessed to go to a to do a funeral. He's probably watching right now because he texts me. Every Sunday he'll text me. My friend over there in California. Two of them. Actually, three of them text me that are probably watching today from the funeral that I did for my friend. I I saw it as an opportunity, but it was humbling. It's humbling to go to a place and be able to maintain. Maintain the guy in me. Can I get any man? Right? Because when we went to the reception, I think I shared already. I went to the reception. I told, I warned my wife, hey, this is a California party. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to parties in Stockton or anywhere else. But the California party, you got to go there with 10 eyes. Always watching. You never know what atmosphere can change. <laughs> Hello. And we went in there and just like expected, walked in there. Everybody was so getting down, vistiando. And I went there out of respect and also an opportunity. Opportunity to be in the testimony. So now I don't encourage you anybody to go to a place like that because you probably end up uh, following their steps. Hallelujah. But I got to go to my friend's party and reach out to them just like you did, Pastor. No, it took, them, took me 30 years to get there. It took me 30 years for me to step up, amen, and be there and be able to see what's happening. And just the presence of God, just me, by me walking, convicted a lot of backsliders in that place. Convicted what? They were hiding their drinks. They were hiding their stuff. They, start, they will speak different language, you know, cussing. Oh, my bad, sorry, Pastor. Oh. Those are my homies. Like, oh, sorry, pastor. My bad. Right? On, right? Imagine if I just say, hey, you know what? Let's go party. Hey. I mess up everything for their lives. I knew what I hold. God gave me a gift. Hello? And I took that gift to that city. The gift of what? Salvation. More better than gold. What you going to do with your gift that I blessed you with? I'm going to tell the world. I'm going to tell my friends. I'm going to tell my homies. I don't care they're coming at me crazy. I wasn't afraid then. Why should I be afraid now? Oh, you don't get that. Hallelujah. Right? I ain't going to run. Oh, please don't give me up. No, I'm going to stand for I believe. Can I get in it, man? And if I get beat down, then I get beat down. But I'm going to let you know I ain't swinging back. I'm going to swing back with prayer and fasting. Can I get in it, man? And let them know the power of God. Why? Because God has changed my life and I'm
confidence in who he is in me. I don't get influenced by my old homies before. I'm an influencer. Hello, somebody. Right? I, I'm influencer. So that's what I'm practicing today. As they text me, as they call me, as they ask me, what should you do? What should I do with this? I should have done I'm about to get more texts than people from here. They'll be texting me like, hey, hopefully you're not busy. But I got a question. This one, California, like, oh, I, wow, who is this guy? I was at the party, at the funeral. Oh. He's watching. I'm dying to see the picture because I already still don't know who you are. <laughs> right? But I'm like, yeah, I just minister to him. A prideful man won't even stand with sinners. Oh, I got quiet now. A prideful man will not walk into that place and say, no, I'm too good for that. Are you with me? You got to walk in with confidence. See, souls being saved by the power of God. So therefore, the whole story is, stop saying that you're afraid. When God asks you to do something, stop saying, I'm afraid. When God tells you to step out, stop saying you are afraid. When God tells you to give over and above, stop saying, I'm afraid. When God tells you to go and minister to that individual, stop saying, I'm afraid. Can I get an amen? Right? Just like he told Joshua almost three or four times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. Stand for Christ. Hallelujah. Stand in the banner of righteousness this morning as we stand. Come on, let's all stand.